It had been rumoured that one day a bridge would be built across the Solent to the Isle of Wight. Thankfully, that hasn't happened. We still cross by ferry either from Portsmouth, Southampton or Lymington, which is the most scenic and an excellent introduction to a world that the mainland has largely left behind. Now build a bridge and the Victorian atmosphere unique to the island that is not a figment of the imagination is destroyed. For those of you who don't know the island and have never visited, I hope this program will be a revelation. If I took one aspect of the island that reflects its Victorian past and not without a sense of personal bias, it is the railway. It used to glory in an extensive network from Bembridge to Freshwater, now reduced to a mere skeleton consisting of a national rail network from Ryde to Shanklin and a faithfully preserved heritage railway from Smallbrook Junction to Wootton. Haven Street, home of the Isle of Wight Steam Railway, is aptly named, and a place to indulge in some nostalgia. This selection of images covers many years, some when digital camera technology was in its infancy. They are included because they represent a style from which I have moved and perhaps wish I hadn't. Whilst the technology has moved on, thankfully much of the island, including the railway, has stood still, and that is its attraction. I had relatives at Ventnor, and therefore have known and loved the island since the 1950s. Since then, it is gratifying to observe that its old world charm has not been eroded, even though M and S have moved into Newport along with the rest of them, but towns like Freshwater retain their rural charm. Over the last 25 years, I have run photographic holidays from HF Holidays Hotel at Freshwater Bay, but I have lost count. The bay is a fantastic location for photography, its geography lending itself to fantastic shots from dawn to dusk, even without shifting from the hotel grounds. From a cliff top bedecked with flowers, we move to some more exotic varieties flourishing in profusion at the Botanic Gardens in Ventnor. The island's geography, and in particular St. Boniface Down, provide a unique sheltered climate in an area known as the Undercliff, enabling a wide range of unusual plants to grow in abundance. The Isle of Wight enjoys a favoured climate, quite different to the mainland. 
Ventnor has been called the English Madeira, basking in subtropical conditions whilst over the hill it can be inclement. Oh dear, it's not just cricket, is it? Hop over the hill to God's Hill and all is fair. Well, with a name like God's Hill, you would expect it, but it refers to the 15th century church that sits, of course, on top of a hill overlooking the village. The village is a major tourist honeypot, and whilst the main street and gift shops are packed with tourists, relatively few find this view that adorns many postcards and calendars. Instead of having to contend with crowds, the main problem for photographers is a parked car. And today, I have been very lucky. Several famous people made the Isle of Wight their home. Amongst them, Queen Victoria, Alfred Lord Tennyson, and, somewhat against his will, Charles I who was imprisoned in Carisbrook Castle whilst fleeing to France. Instead, the governor of Carisbrook Castle, a Colonel Hammond, sent him to his execution in 1648. Carisbrook was once the capital of the island, and its Norman castle sits on the site of a Roman fort. Today, the castle's most loved residents are its donkeys, which operate the treadwheel in the Elizabethan wellhouse for visitors. Those who have a good head for heights may like to walk the castle walls. I went for the richly decorated chapel of St. Nicholas, but the current building is much more recent than it looks. It was designed by Percy Stone around 1904 to commemorate the 250th anniversary of Charles I's execution in 1649. Visitors flock to Osborne House, the holiday retreat for Queen Victoria, her paradise created by Prince Albert, where she found solace after his untimely death. However, relatively few pop across the road to the family church at Whippingham, dedicated to St. Mildred. Prince Albert had a hand in its design, and today it retains the atmosphere of the latter years of Queen Victoria's reign, whose ghost might still haunt the church. In his excellent book, England's Thousand Best Churches, an essential Bible for anyone interested in church architecture, Simon Jenkins rather amusingly describes the exterior as a cross between a college chapel and an asylum laundry. I have mentioned this publication before in my shows, and I continue to marvel at his no-nonsense and direct approach in his views. I would never possess the guts to be so frank. St. Mildred's overlooks the Medina, a navigable river that wends its way several miles inland from Cowes to the market town of Newport. The old harbour offers an assortment of boats for photography, with many of the buildings that previously served the port now transformed into chic restaurants and cafes. One of the island's key attractions is its diversity of chocolate box picture postcard villages. They include Brystone, Gatcombe and the charmingly named Winkle Street at Calborn. Furthermore, because of its diamond shape, there are four prominent points on the island. They are Cowes, Bembridge Foreland, St. Catherine's Point and, of course, the Needles. Near Bembridge Foreland is Culver Down, with excellent views and wartime relics, and not far away is Bembridge Windmill, restored by the National Trust. 
If you can manage the narrow steps and have a good head for heights, its workings can be viewed at close quarters. Much of the island's southern coast has dramatic cliff scenery. Now, by comparison, the northern half is flatter, and most noticeably at Shalfleet and Newtown, where a marshy landscape intersected by several channels merge almost imperceptibly into the Solent. Newtown had a harbour, but the river silted up. However, the old town hall survives, now in the care of the National Trust. My favourite walk is to take Mill Road from Shalfleet Village. Now, it starts by the pub, opposite the church, which is worth a visit, by the way, on a broad track leading to Shalfleet Quay, where there is a fascinating assortment of boats in a state of repair and disrepair. For an island so rich in its diversity of scenery and heritage, I am always conscious of what has been left out, such as Bonchurch and Steep Hill Cove, both near Ventnor. I will conclude, however, with a highlight that ranks high in visitors' opinion, the Needles. By all means go by bus, but the best approach for the more energetic, and the cheapest by the way, is the walk from Freshwater Bay over Tennyson Down, named of course after the poet, to the Needles. You may have to pay for that final stretch if you are not a National Trust member, but for a free view of the Needles, pop around the corner to the former rocket testing site. I have already featured this in one of my photo walks, but for now, a few more images to whet your appetite before returning home on the ferry, or better still, by staying a few extra nights.